How's everything going? Going really well. Thanks. That's good to hear. So, um, your mangrove piece, did that sell? What's that? Did your mangrove piece sell? The bit mangrove one, yes. Yeah, how much did that sell for? Um, I don't know. It's on it's it's on uh Maker's Place. It wasn't much. Let's see here. Maker's Place. Let's see what the final one. Uh, Big Mangrove One. Here we go. It sold for point one five eight ETH. Cool. And uh, you basically sold every piece you've created, correct? Is Not every piece. Pieces? No. Mm -mm. Not every no piece. I have. I have. I have stuff that's up on Foundation. A couple of the places that you know that are just sitting there. Um, not all the null voids sold out, which, um, which is fine. I figure that it'll it'll sell at some stage. How do you find buyers? Um, do you just use your because you 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 already are a, you, a a name in the space that people are attracted to. I just didn't know if you actively pursued buyers to come come to you. Um, not really. I mean, I think you know, I go on Twitter. I post Twitter. when I have stuff on Twitter. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's my yeah. spot. But yeah. yeah, how do you find buyers? I haven't found any yet. So oh, you haven't found any? Okay. Yeah. So we we yeah, I think it's, I think the... drop it at at Ephemeral. So it's been a few weeks. Yeah. And we're, you know, spending the next six, um, our process is we do six week sprints. Mm -hmm. And the first six week sprint was getting the community to build the art. We had hoped to make a sale at Ephemeral. And then we didn't, which was a much lower attendance than we anticipated. And yeah. this next six weeks, we're just focusing on finding the buyers. So I just figured I'd reach out to you and be like, where are they? How do we find them? You know? Yeah. I mean, I think, in, I think, you know, last year, like things were kind of crazy because, you know, Nifty Gateway seemed to really have like a program where they were like really bringing in people who are buying stuff. But I think a lot of it has cooled off because there's so many people entering the marketplace, um, you know, kind of pulling into the pool. But I think it's also now making it a little bit more creative to where now you have to figure out, I guess, the best place to, um, you know, the best way to market. I mean, I think there's a, the, the thing, there's a lot of people that I think probably believed early on that, Oh, well, I'll just make an NFT and it'll automatically sell. It's really no different than the regular art world, you know, and you have to continue to, to market your work and, you know, get it out there. Yes, sir. Yeah. I've, I've started with, you know, I'm poking around some Reddit channels. I'm using blockchain for ecology just because at least this audience knows both yeah, about yeah. NFTs and can't understand what we're trying to do. And I'm trying to put together like a sales guide or, you know, and so are there any Twitter followers or anybody like, uh, or any like groups or spaces that you're aware of that would be places where buyers hang out, you know what I mean? Or is there mm, such thing as that? Not really. I mean, I know that Clubhouse, I haven't been on Clubhouse in a while. Um, yeah. Maybe that's why I haven't sold an NFT lately. Um but for a while there, there's been a lot of really great groups of people on Clubhouse. So the Talk Nerdy to Me Club was actually really good for a lot of people. Um, Which club? It was Talk Nerdy to Me. That one was a good one. Um, the NFT Tips was a good one. Um, but like I said, I haven't been on there in a while. You know, I've 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 popped in a few few rooms here and there, just listening to what people say. But uh, Clubhouse isn't what it used to be. I've noticed. It's it was more exclusive when it was iOS only, and now that's opened up to Android. It's it's pretty much anybody anywhere. I don't. I mean, I don't know if that's what. I don't know what it is. I just. I just. I can. There's definitely a change. I can feel in the in the in the overall feel of the of the platform. Yeah, I never got fully into it. I poked around here and there. Um, I, I mean, it took a lot of human hours to influence and and, and break in. And I did. I just didn't have those human hours to give. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's better things to do in the world. Yeah. So okay, Clubhouse, Twitter, I get. Um, you know, and they, are there any like Twitter accounts that you'd recommend following or anything like that? Or um. Yeah, I mean, I think like the guys at eight eight eight. I think it's. I don't know what his his. I mean, you could probably just Google it, but it's the eight 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 guy. He's he's always posting really good stuff. Um. I think the ALW guy, he always posts really great stuff about artwork. Um, let's see. Yeah, and JO7. JO7 is a JO7.eth. He's a really good guy. He's, he's running a DAO. So always talking about NFTs and the future of NFTs. So yeah, I would say those are the ones that, that stand out to me. Thank you. 
Yeah, so the first steps with our community is we built the community first. We got the activists because that's my core competency. I can touch women, inspire activists to take action pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, next step is to sell. And then later on, we would we may build something out. We may not. We may create a DAO. We may not. Yeah. You yeah. know, our, our community is not the early adopter. Some, some a few are, are early crypto art folks. But most of the people who posted on on uh, on our Genesis drop, it was their yeah. first NFT they ever minted. So it's a cool opportunity. If they, have you? Do you have any experience running a DAO at all? And you know, do you? No, no, I don't. No, no. Cool. How many NFTs have you created to date? That's a good question. Sometimes I just mint and I I, I mint them and I leave them. And I just keep yeah. going. You know, I, there sometimes I decide that there's like something that I really want to mint and I'll leave it up there and. Um, it seems like lately I've been getting a lot of followers on Maker's Place, um, but um, there hasn't been a lot of activity. So um, I just minted something on Known Origin yesterday, actually. Uh, it was a photo I took. Known or Unknown Origin? Known Origin. Um, awesome. Yeah. What was that piece about? Like, what was, what was... It's, a, it's a piece that I shot about 10 years ago. It's an underwater fashion piece. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Do you I ever think, reach think, out to Richard Branson? Because I know that you have the contacts with Richard Branson and stuff. Is anyone in his connection, his world, connected to NFT buying at all? Or is that not some place that... I don't know. That's not, I, that's not a conversation I probably would have with him. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know what his thoughts are on NFTs, honestly. Okay. Um, the first thing that actually, the, the seed that kind of germinated into Reach NFT was your underwater mining. I mean, your underwater munitions piece. Yep. That yep. really, like, that really, like, I, before I had seen NFTs in 2018, been people talking about them, but I didn't understand how they could be applied to social impact. Right. So I just want to first let you know that you're like a Jedi master who, you know, oh, an entire thanks, community man. germinated from your lineage and, 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 you know, because, because of your inspiration. So thank you for no, that. Thanks. No, oh, thanks, man. You're welcome. Yeah. No, it's, it's still, I mean, I think it's still kind of an experiment. Like, it's a social experiment of like, how do we, how do we make, you know, something like this work for us and not against us? You know, and I think I think um, art always has a way of kind of putting people together. I mean, I've often felt that art is the shortest path between two human beings. And so if you can kind of cross some of the, the gaps uh, with, where we would maybe not understand how someone's, you know, grew up or maybe their culture is a little bit different. I think art has a way of kind of shifting the perspective to helping us understand a little bit more. And I think that's why NFTs really have a capability of telling a story and driving uh, a clear path to action. I love that. You know, we were, we've been talking about, you know, how the, the possibilities of this art going to change the world, but it's just like, unless, unless there's buyers, <laughs> you know I mean, it's just, it's, it's an experiment. Yeah. You know? yeah, so, yeah. I think, I think it's, it's a lot like when you were, you know, somebody had posted something the other day that I saw, it was like, it was showing all the different cell phones that were out there and there was like the brick phone and then it had all the way, all the way up to like the iPhone and it pointed at the brick phone and said, this is where we are at right now with NFTs. And I think that that's probably a very good, you know, ex- you know, d- definition of, of, of really how far we have yet to go. Um, any fun things that you're, you're working on right now that you should be aware of? You know, I mean, I just been focused, I've been focusing on really bit mangrove, kind of getting that finished. Um, you know, we've got, I've got a whole series of things that I'm doing. Both of those, Nullvoid and bit mangrove, those are geared towards more installation work. Um, Can you tell me about Nullvoid? I don't know if I have, if I know Yeah, that that's one. the one about the munitions. So, oh, the um, munitions, yeah. Yeah, so the, this, it's also, it was meant from the very beginning to be kind of an immersive installation. So you walk into a, a physical space, and if you have an NFT uh, that is owned by me, doesn't matter if it's a null void NFT or whatever. Uh, if you own any NFT from me, there'll be a certain um, experience that's that's custom to each one of those NFT holders. So it gives people the incentive not only to collect but also to visit uh, the installation when it's you know when it's non-COVID times, and we can actually get back into the regular population again. I don't know. I mean, I don't get down this rabbit hole, but it seems like COVID is going to be an end- endemic. It's not a pandemic that's going to stop in any way. It seems like, and one of the one of our verticals is to alleviate COVID suffering. And one of the pieces I'm looking to explore and talking to some artists is like, 
like the COVID look and feel of, of, of that little, you know, virus merging with the human DNA in a way. And for us in a way to just like stop fearing it, I guess, you know what I mean? And start embracing yeah. it. Yeah. I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit, you know, outside the box from the, the, the traditional commentary at this moment in time. So I don't, I don't know whether that's the next thing I'm going to lead with. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a lot, there's a lot of uncertainty right now. And if there's anything you could tell, you know, creators who just dropped an NFT in the Rage NFT series, you know, any advice you give them for, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the the number one thing to do is like obviously you always make for yourself. Don't make for the sake of selling. Um, I mean, it's great that we want to make impact and all those kinds of things, but then it's also like you know find ways to challenge yourself, right? Look at what other artists are doing, find what other artists are doing that you like that really speaks to you, and try to see if you can up the ante. I mean, I think that's really what the art game is about. It's like trying to figure out how to constantly keep your skills sharp. Um, I mean, of course, there's always the element of like just seeing what you can get away with, but that's short lived, right? Um, I think the the artists that see the the test of time through good economies and bad economies are always the one that really gets you to think. Because going back to the idea, is there is there good art versus bad art? Oh, there's lots of bad art out there, um, but you know, art isn't beautiful. It's not ugly. Uh, art just makes you feel. And so when you look at your piece, if you've created something, say one, is it worth minting? Do I think I should mint this? Does it, is this going to make someone feel something? Um, if, you know, you can ask a few people, ask some people that don't like you, right? Say, hey, does this make you feel anything? And if the person that doesn't like you says they feel something, then you know you probably should mint that piece. That's incredible. <laughs> I've never heard that before. Um, this has been a very action-packed 15 minutes. <laughs> I think, you know, like you're just dropping the wisdom for us. Uh, um, well, I'm, I'm always, always happy to help wherever I can. But yeah, I think, you know, I think the thing to realize too is that it doesn't matter whether you've been doing this since the beginning or you're just starting, everybody still has the same challenges of trying to get their stuff out there and moved. Um, but, you know, most people didn't become artists because they want to be millionaires, did they? True. Yeah. True on that one. Yeah. And like we are rich. Our community is rich with talent. And like, you know, um, we rushed to get to ephemeral. So I was kind of offline for like 10 days. So I didn't get a chance to become intimate with the artwork as yeah. I was trying to touch move and inspire people to, you know, go to our gallery and see what it's about. Yeah. And now that I'm back and settled back in and on, on my boat, just kind of like with internet. And I'm like, every day I get this opportunity to, to make an emotional connection to a piece. And it's yeah. extremely rewarding. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. No, it's it's. Uh, I think it's it's great because I think like you know even just the act of creating, even if it doesn't go anywhere, it always helps kind of charge you up and at least gives you a different you know attitude for the day. Big time. Yeah, it's it. Yeah, yeah. You know, I may have to get a real job, and not, you know, in the meantime. But you know, yeah, I'm well, still gonna keep doing this. No question. Well, I mean, I think I think that's kind of what's wrong with our society. We're like, oh, we're going to do this thing. Oh, how much money is it going to make you? And it's like, I don't know, but it's going to make me happy. And because it makes me happy, I don't need to explain it to you. Yeah, well, so no. yeah, yeah, my grandma, my, I just said it to my grandma the other day. We were talking and she said to me that, you know, well, that's really cool. But, you know, does it make a lot of money? And oh, it makes me happy, you know. And she, you know, at 88 was like, it's a really good point. You know, it's, you know, so it, it just shows you, you're never too late to learn. Love that. Thank you. That, that softens me for sure. <laughs> There's a little bit of that, you know, like, yeah, I don't want to let the community down, you yeah, know, for sure. but at the same time, I'm not going to sell anything if my nervous system is all constricted and I'm not, you know, feeling the love and the, and the incredible creative vibration that came through with this process. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, it's, um, that's cool. That's cool that you you're, you're you're putting the community together. So does it, it looks? Um, I think I, I've looked at it before. So you're taking the artist's work and then you're minting it for them. Is that right? We did because you know we we when we started six weeks ago, Matic integration didn't wasn't happening on OpenSea, and okay. a lot of our folks, if if we had known like from day one, uh -huh. the Matic integration was coming down the pipeline, we could have gotten people trained on it. Right, but we right. just decided to do it as a because because of the timing and, and trying to get the um, 
deadline for ephemeral complete. Right. We just decided, you know, hey, we'll take your artwork, we'll mint it, we'll have signed agreements, we'll make sure we we'll pay you whatever royalties, you know, what I mean, and 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 go from there. But then in the future, the point a now we're much more familiar with the I guess the most well capitalized um, NFT platform. Sure as hell isn't isn't that great, you know? What I mean, there's yeah. a lot of wonkiness, like you talked about that phone. It's like it's like the brick phone for sure. And yeah, yeah. and with that, there's opportunity. But I'm never one to rush out and build something. I'm always one to, to, to build community and, and engagement first, um, you know, because there's just so much crappy software that no one uses, you know, and that, that's, yeah. not, that's not where my soul is, for sure. For sure, for sure. No, I understand that completely. Yeah, so we, we minted, I think maybe one or two people minted their own, but everybody mm -hmm. else, uh, we, we minted for them. Okay. And then um, everything's on Matic, so there's no gas, which is key. Yeah, you know? and, and, and uh, uh, do they, they retain, I guess, like residual on that somehow? Yeah, I think we, you know, because I, I, you know, it's the learning experience, right? I think I, we we put 0. 0.3 as the residual, thinking it was 30%, and oh. it's like 0.3%. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. So we might, you know, we might burn them all and redo them you know like it doesn't okay. cost anything to figure it yeah. out you know right, right. We're, we're, we're just figuring that out so yeah how many have you sold so far oh, zero. oh you sold nothing and it's how long has it been up since uh, i guess two two and a half weeks oh okay wow, i didn't think you should have what are the price points some of the price points are pretty high i mean oh, okay like are they less than 0.5 or more than point five. A few are more, less than point five. So just the first ones looking at one point one, point seven five, point five. Um, and, uh, some of the price points disappeared because. And are these artists are that are well known? Do they have a history? Um, so, I mean, some of the artists, the most well known artists, so his piece, I, I'll say, uh, I, can, mm. I think he's trying to give nineteen ETH. His his name is Mark Henson, and he's really well known in permaculture circles, and he animated this piece. So, you know, I mean, our price points are definitely ambitious. Yeah. Um, you know, I'll show you Mark Henson's piece. I'll drop that out of thing. Um, but yeah, th I think, but it's weird. Like, the 19th is what it is. But then I'm looking at OpenSea. OpenSea randomly three days ago transferred this piece from a, us to us and no longer is the price listed. So that's a, that's a little confusing, I think, for people who are exploring this. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't get the the biggest artists in the NFT space to start, you know what I mean? Okay. We got the most inspired uh, activists. And um, now the goal is to get those inspired activists out there and, and looking to, to, to find buyers themselves and, you know, in, in, in the most, you know, respectful way possible. Cool. I'm pulling it up now. Thanks. Oh, that's a nice piece. Oh, you know what? I saw this. This was on the DSS chat. Was it the DSS chat? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I posted it on there when okay. it first came up. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a really nice piece. Yeah, and he's and... he's he sold his artwork for multiple thousands of dollars, the original canvas pieces. Oh, he said it for 19 ETH? Is that what he priced it at? <laughs> that's what he priced it at. <laughs> yeah, that's not going to sell at 19 ETH. God, like, what, what else is he... So the problem, too, is that if I click on the... Regen NFT. What will it say here? So we've only got 19 views on this one for one. That's yeah. Why is it not opening up the? Yeah. Thumbnail? So like when you open it, you're not seeing the price, are you? Because we're after that uh, weird transfer three days ago. It shows that you listed it at 19 ETH 21 days ago. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. And then you transferred it three days. ago. We didn't transfer. We're the, the open seat randomly transferred one night. And we were at least on my end. I'm not seeing the prices the first thing anymore. Oh, that's um, weird. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, so your your advice is to potentially price more. Um, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, there's a bunch of things that you could do. I mean, I think like it's not that the artwork's not good. It's it's great, but it's like, I mean, I think people are looking to see like, you know, especially I mean, if it sits on the market for a long time too. Like if you don't care, then you don't care. Like I have a couple of mine that are at foundation and they're just, they're photographs. They're one of ones and they're selling for one ETH. And I have no intention of going back and changing it and lowering it. If it sells, it sells, you know, at some point I'm going to go in there and I'm going to probably change it to a higher price based off of what my other artwork is selling. Um, 
but right now it's sitting at so usually what I'll do like if I have like a new thing that I'm doing I'll start off at a really low price like I, I, I meant it to known origin I think it was 0.27 ETH and if it goes it goes but in another three or four days if it doesn't go I'm gonna put it all the way up to one ETH um, and I think you know that also kind of creates a sense of urgency as well it's like okay well you can get it now get it now for this yeah. price yeah um, I just think it's, it, you know, I think what you're going to have to do is it's, this is a psychological thing. Like you have to figure out like, how do you motivate people to buy? How do you, just like you would any other kind of scenario, you know? And it's like, this is the reason why we have art showings, right? We, we, we bring people in, we serve them wine and we talk about the artwork and we hope that it sells. Yeah. We thought, you know, we had great connections through Brooke Einbender of Mindbender Art for, to the folks at Shack 15. And we're going to do, do an event there either late August or mid September but this COVID spike, we just decided not to do that. You know what I mean? That it would just be, you know, it's probably best to just, just try to figure out how to sell this stuff in, in, online as best we can. Yeah. 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 No, for sure. For sure. Well, um, yeah, man. Well, I think, I think um, maybe the thing to do just kind of moving forward is, you know, maybe even think about like, if you've got a whole community of people, which I don't have, I'm just one person. Um, you might think of trying to figure out a way to kind of do like some PR, you know, and have a publicist kind of drop some, some articles. Um, I know that, you know, it was kind of a weird scenario that happened, but like I had bit mangrove one up there for sale for a while and um, there was like no bites and it was on makers place and makers place even did several Instagram lives with me and everything. Uh, and then the Dallas morning news ran a story and somebody saw it in the Dallas Morning News and said, oh, I want to buy that. And they bought it. So it was somebody here in Dallas that bought it. It wasn't even, you know, it's crazy. So, Got it. Yeah, so the PR led to the sale. P- on, that, on that particular one, it did, for sure. You know, and on the Nil Void ones, the ones that we sold, BT and I, you know, that was, I would say, 100% came from Clubhouse. Got it. But that was in April. That was a whole different world then. whole different world. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're pretty strapped for budget at this moment in time, but it doesn't mean we couldn't look to the community to maybe crowdfund. And I think if we did, if we did a crowdfunded PR blast combined with a guerrilla marketing and viral marketing of our own, yeah. I think that could be effective. Um, but yeah, we're just, we're exploring best practices now. So thank and, you, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm looking for ways to kind of like, cause obviously I want impact, you know, I want to try to figure out how you know, that impact can really make a difference, you know, and it's not going to make a difference if people are minting artworks and it's just sitting there. So, um, you know, I, I, I think the, the, the tricky piece is that the variable is the market and it's constantly changing, you know. Um, thankfully, the price of uh, Ethereum is, is going back up. And so I think, you know, people are like, they're feeling a little bit better about it. Um, and I think I've, you know, I've noticed that it also depends on people buy based off of what their what their uh, buy in price has been. So if they buy in at four thousand dollars and then all of a sudden it drops to two, uh, they're probably not going to buy any artwork. And so the volatility of the market plays a big role in this. Well said. Yeah, things are blowing up again, which is great. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, yeah. hopefully yeah. things can continue the upward trend. Yeah. And you know, the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. I think layer two really takes out some of that like hate the environmental information warfare against nfts that i know you and i have discussed over time a little bit so yeah yeah you know yeah that's it's 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 really great well i mean i think keep it up and i think you know if if, um you know if, if you've got artists that are minting stuff literally just you know they really need to challenge themselves you know make it you know really figure out like you know some find something hard like find what you're good at and then find out how to make it harder and I think just that, that if you're constantly doing that, I mean, with the pandemic that happened, I couldn't go out and photograph anymore. I literally spent, I can't tell you how many hours on YouTube trying to figure out how to use Blender because I thought, well, I could use my knowledge as a photographer in the 3D world and use my lighting experience and my camera experience in the same context, but I've got to figure a few things out first. And so that's really how I got started with all of that. Thanks for time, Jeremy. I really appreciate oh, your guidance and leadership and, and, and appreciate it. I'm going to record this. I've recorded this and I'm going to hand it to our community if that's okay. Yeah, that's um, completely fine. That's completely, yeah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's great for you to, I'm glad that you reached out and, you know, I hope that this helps. I feel like I didn't really help a whole lot, but, you know. I mean, you're, you're being really honest, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is not your first day, you know what I mean? And the humility behind it just it helps us all have humility in this process. Yeah, I mean, just do it. Honestly, I know every artist always says this, but do it because you love it. I mean, like, if you really love this, 
like the collectors are going to see that and they can also see through when you're doing it just because you're trying to make a buck i love social impact i love trend the opportunity of using blockchain to transform society so yeah. i'm going to keep that up regardless you know what i mean and and, and i hope we can keep having great artists come together to to create our work and and see if we can really uh, move the needle as far as uh, getting resources together. Yeah, for sure. For you look like you're on a boat. Are you going somewhere? Yeah, no, this is my this is my home. This oh, you live on the houseboat. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Thirty foot, um, thirty foot Newport. It's a I got it for a dollar, and it's called the Restorer. What? Got it for a dollar because at the Berkeley Yacht Club, a buddy of mine knew he couldn't sell it for like three or four months. It was going to incur the slip fees. It's probably worth two or three grand. Yeah, and he just didn't want to pens two to three grand and have to clean it up so he just kind of gave it to me as is i love it man it is such a blessing holy and crap I, dude you lucked out yeah and i've sailed probably three four hundred nautical miles in this thing now you know what i mean so and, you know i get a sail full of hand hand sewed and wow. tape you know what i mean i've i i've, I've jerry rigged it and not put a lot of money into it that's but every I sailor on the planet yeah um <laughs> how where, remind me where you're at again berkeley berkeley okay awesome you in the so Bay cool, Area? Man. You in the Bay Area? Or? No, I'm in Dallas, yeah. Texas. Cool. That's so cool, man. Well, congratulations on such an, an epic find. Thank you. And I do, you know, the Restorer name is something that, you know, I was also thinking like a 10,000 drop series of boats. You mm. know, and the idea is like the military has multiple destroyers in the water. Right. What if we had ecological restorers out mm. there and the, the money went to upcycling vessels because there's, there's yeah. smushing boats here like it's going out of style oh, sure. and sure. i'd r much rather create like an ecological sailing restoration unit you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> Where we... thanks thanks yeah. that's that's the kind of stuff that i'm gonna do until i die you know what i mean whether it's nfts or or whatever yeah for sure well it's it's uh, really great to see you great to hear what you're working on and if you need help or if you need some I don't know if I can if I can help you anyway. Let me know. But um, you know, I, I, if I've learned something amazing, I'll, I'll be I'll be happy to share it along. Thank you. And there's another potential drop coming up with a guy who's pretty influential in Puerto Rico circles with crypto. And I'd love to circle back with you and talk to you about that because we may have you know really high end buyers at, at, um, at our fingertips there that we maybe don't have this time. So I'd love to keep the the channels of communication open because. Like I said, you're the Jedi who spurned it all with your with your own. I, 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 I wouldn't say that, but I, I'm glad that I'm glad that you think so. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thanks so much, John. It's really good to see you. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. See you, buddy. See ya.